Good morning traders. This is day number two of Top Gainers Trading and this is the plan that I'm trading. This is just the beginning of it right here. Just to give you an idea, it is a written plan. It's now about uh, just shy of 500 words. I have also trading examples built into the trading plan to remind me exactly what we're looking for. This is where the account stands that we're using for this uh, trading, but we're only using a maximum of $300 a day for these trades and I'll try to explain that as we get into the trade day. The market just opened a few seconds ago so let's go to the charts page and right now I have everything on the charts page that I use during the trade day so that you guys can see exactly what I'm looking at instead of having it just all on my laptop. So the only thing is I have to get used to refreshing the top gainers and all that stuff. I'm not sure what's going on here with the spy popping up on this chart page. That was kind of weird. So let's see here. So I'm seeing different different things on my laptop than I'm seeing on the desktop right now. Like this is not refreshing, so not sure if this is going to work. So let me let me just use the laptop for now with the top gainer screener and we'll deal with this screener in just a second. So we have GovX as the number one top gainer. So we're gonna put that on the, the chart page and I'm going to look for a level of resistance that's written in the trading plan. This is an old alert, so we'll get rid of that. I'm gonna draw that level of resistance on the chart page we can set an alert there. So this is all happening live, so just bear with me. So that's GovX. We also have AEMD. Oh, I see what's going on. So that was, um, my laptop was set to pre-market, but we're not in the pre-market, so it shouldn't, it shouldn't matter anymore. But it is weird how this screener isn't really populating all of the top gainers. It does have the number one top gainer, but so we'll have to look at that when we get a chance. All right. Let me just see if that's the market open. Okay, so this is where this belongs. Now these are the levels that I wanna see broken on all of these stocks in order for us to consider taking a trade. So that's what I'm marking out right now. And also, I'm also placing alerts just so that I don't have to stay like glued to the screen in order to uh, find out if these stocks have done this. So I'm back looking at the top gainer screener on my laptop. Sorry you can't see that, but as soon as I get a chance, as soon as we get caught up here, I'll see what's going on with this widget. So MGAM, we need to look at that one. V-R-A-X. -E 
So this one's not likely to trigger a trade, but since we have the room, we'll place our level of resistance on this chart. Yeah, this is very unlikely to trigger a trade. So let's just go on to the next stock. CYAD. So MGAM is getting very close to triggering a trade, but we have our alert out there, so we don't really have to worry about missing it. AMD is also getting close to triggering a trade. So at some point, we're going to have to make a decision and pick one over the other, it looks like. This is the last stock that I'll probably be placing on the chart page. I think that's our... Nope. I saw an alert pop up on my, desk, on my laptop, but it wasn't the price alert. All right, so there's a price alert for AEMD. We're already on the one minute chart, which is where we want to be at this point. And since they're both taking off right now, I don't um, want to necessarily commit to AMD yet, but this one did not hit the price alert. So AMD is definitely winning so far, and the part of this trading plan is kind of like a first come, first serve mentality. Whichever stock takes off first that's the one that we go with and um, once we're triggered to take a trade that's it we are committed to that stock so I'm just waiting for it to make a new high there is MGAM so it can still trigger a trade first we have to see We could also decide which stock we want to uh, choose to trade and stick with that, but of course that is going to be somewhat uh, subjective. Let me just do one thing here. It looks like MGAM is going to trigger a trade first. Just waiting for a one minute candle to make a new high, basically. So if I see 1969, yep, I got to get into MGAM, and that's the one that we're going with. So now I just need to place my stop loss in the appropriate position. 1849. It doesn't matter what happens to AMD now, we're committed to MGAM. Whoops. Okay, now we need to use our calculator 1978 and 1849. This is trade number one of three possible trades I could take today. 2365 is the profit target. Now we can kind of blow this up onto uh, not one single chart because I don't have this set up so that that's going to work, but let's go over here. Where did I say that profit target was? 2365.
and you can see my position here and the PL and all that kind of stuff. So just showing that because I know that's what everyone wants to see. It's not a good idea for new traders to look at their PL. So, but I'm not a new trader, so <laughs> it's not going to affect me. Just making this so that you can see all of the pertinent information. So if we get stopped out, we take the next trade, and if we get stopped out again, we take the next trade, and if we get stopped out three times, that's the end of the trade day. So we have up to three chances. Once we're in the trade, we don't judge it at all. That's part. This is part of trader discipline. The main thing that I'm trying to show all of you guys is that in order to be a profitable trader, you need trader discipline. In order to become a profitable trader, you need a profitable trading plan. And in order to have a profitable trading plan, you have to have a plan and test it. And that's what we're doing right now with this new top gainers plan. This is trade number two, actually. I'll show you the spreadsheet at the end where we've been tracking the trade so far. And uh, this is day number two, but this is actually trade number three of the plan. We took two trades on the first day. And uh, we'll see where this ends up. Looks like we're going to get stopped out here pretty soon. There we go. Now we just have to wait for the next trade. And we're trading with a 3R profit target. So that means that uh, we could easily get back that profit. The only thing here is this was kind of an unusually large candle. So it might not work out on this trade. But I'm not worried about what happens uh, from day to day. Because things like this are going to average out over time. There's going to be occasions where we get into trades in front of big candles like that, and they're just going to uh, go directly to our 3R, 3R profit target. If you're wondering what this is, this is just a chart of the SPY. So it's got really nothing to do with this trading. It's just uh, something I have up here taking space right now. If I made this one single chart, you wouldn't be able to see a big portion of the chart. And I guess I could, and we could just... Uh, we could just kind of keep it positioned where whatever this is blocking doesn't really matter. So we might do that in just a second. But we're about to get triggered into the next trade. So I need to focus here. The high of this candle is 1915. So we're looking for 1916 or better. So obviously that first entry was a false breakout, but okay, now let me just focus here. 1876 is what I'm looking for. Got to watch the price bubble, 1876. Okay, there we go. Did the best I could, got some slippage, and now our stop loss goes to 1829. That's why you need that offset. Well, I mean, the price was moving quickly there as well. And this is a, a bit of a higher price stock, so you're going to see a little more slippage. There's obviously a ton of volume. 2065 is, is our new profit target. Definitely within possibility. It's within reach. Okay, so hopefully we don't get stopped out right away just so that I have a couple of minutes here to explain some things uh, that I kind of alluded to earlier. So for one, that first trigger that we, uh, the, the first trade that we got triggered into was somewhat of an anomaly. You're going to see those from time to time where we had to kind of get in in front of a pretty large candle, actually during a, a very large candle. Uh, which ended up being a false breakout. There's absolutely no way to predict when that's going to happen. So you just have to take the good with the bad with any trading plan or trading system. And hopefully over time, things average out. And that's why you take 100 trades 
and you see, okay, is this actually going to be profitable in the long run? Because from day to day, trade to trade, you're going to have some strange things happen sometime and it can't, you can't write your plan around those anomalies, basically, is what, what I'm saying. So anyway, the whole point of this plan is to, to try to make it kind of simple, streamlined, and clean cut so that it's easy to follow, and hopefully it will be profitable. That's what we're testing right now. We may get stopped out on this trade. We could take up to three trades. If we lose the third trade, then we're all done trading for the day, and it's a max loss day, which is absolutely fine because that's all part of the trading plan. So as long as we stick to the plan 100% of the time, every single day, then we're doing just fine. And at the end of the 100 trades, we'll have good useful data that will either tell us that this plan works, it is profitable, or maybe we need a higher profit target to make it profitable, or maybe it just, just doesn't work at all, which I highly doubt. But anyway, here we go. Looks like we might get stopped out again. That's absolutely fine. As I said, we're allowed to take three trades. So we'll have one more chance. It doesn't mean it's going to work, but we still have one more chance to take a trade. Now, here's where a, a real danger for a new trader exists. Remember, we were lo also looking at AEMD. The danger is that you might start to second guess yourself and say, well, maybe a MGAM, that was the wrong one. Maybe I need to go to AEMD. Now you're resetting all your statistics. If you start jumping into trades with other ticker symbols and you don't know um, if it's really going to work or not. So what I mean there is that in all of my forward testing, which is what I've been doing for a very long time now, uh, I found that the subsequent entries have a higher probability of working out. Meaning that as I take more entries into a stock, the, um, the chances of those trades working out goes up. And that's happened in every single case uh, and all the different trading plans that I've tested. So right now, this, I don't know the exact probability yet because we haven't tracked enough data, but I do know that this trade has a higher probability of working out than the first trade. So if, if I didn't take it, I would be missing out on that pro higher probability setup. So that's why we need to stick with the same ticker symbol, even though it may turn out that, that AEMD was, was the one to go with, but you can't, you can't go back in time. So it's really important for trader discipline and for your data that you're collecting to just stick to the ticker symbol that you first chose and do that every single day. And then after 100 trades, your data will actually be meaningful. It'll be useful. You can use it and we'll be able to say, OK, trade number two has a 50 percent chance of working out where trade number one only had a 25 percent chance of working out or whatever the numbers may be. So here we are getting close to our uh, profit target now. And we're also tracking higher profit targets. So if this thing goes to 4R, 5R, 6R, whatever, we're going to know about it and we're going to put it down on our spreadsheet. And at the end, there we go. We just got our 3R profit target hit on trade number two. So technically, we were up 1R at this point, but you know that this candle that we jumped in front of or that we traded on originally was huge. So we're probably break even or not profitable for today, but that's okay. And we're going to go over that right now as well. So let's go to the accounts page because we're all done trading for the day. Once you have a, and this is a great example right here of why I like to use profit targets and set them to a reasonable uh, target because look what happened, how quickly this thing reversed and flushed down. So I don't know if this is going to go higher later or not. Uh, but again, we will be watching it. I'll calculate all of the higher profit targets and see. But obviously if we were holding to 4R, we, we would have got stopped out on that trade. So. And I'm not just picking 3R arbitrarily. Uh, in all of my back testing with small caps and mid caps, I found that three, the 3R profit target was really the only way to be profitable. Uh, it didn't work on the mid caps, by the way. It, it did only work on the small caps. But I don't want to get into all the other trading plans right now. Let's go to the account page and look at what happened during this trade. So we're actually we're actually profitable today with a profit of 220, and that's only because we held to the 3R profit target. This is even though we lost that first trade. So I don't I think I got to show you this at the beginning, but basically I set the account so that we're starting with a thousand dollars. I think it was 9999. Um, but just to show you, so that we we can do this every day and uh, go back to the account page. Now, 
One detail that you have to know is that I'm also trading another plan with this account, trading the SPXL day trading plan. Right now, we don't have a position with that plan. You can see my positions are empty, but that's going to have an effect on the account value. So uh, we'll have to keep that in mind. But yeah, let's look at the uh, MGAM. So we lost the first trade, we won the second trade, and we still ended up profitable, even that first, even though that first trade was huge. So uh, after this video is done, I'm going to enter all of the data. I guess I could do it live, but it's going to be messy. It's going to take time. So let me just show you the spreadsheet and I'll show you our trade from Friday. And I have a video showing these trades. Uh, they'll just be the previous couple of videos. GOVX was what we traded on Friday. And same thing happened. We lost the first trade and we were down 282 from the first trade, but we won the second trade, which was a three hour trade. And this trade, the second trade, had a higher risk than the first trade. So it was kind of the opposite of what happened today. Today, you saw the first trade have higher risk than the second trade. So the second trade wasn't as profitable uh, per risk as the, the uh, first trade was um, potentially. So anyway, that's what I mean by we can't worry about the, the minutia of, well, this one had a higher risk than that one. That's why we're taking 100 trades. It's going to average out in the long run. Our first trade already kind of averages out that uh, scenario that we saw today. So anyway, hopefully this video was helpful to you. I'm trying to kind of show you guys disciplined trading based off of a real trading plan. This is just the beginning of the plan. Um, but yeah, that's the trading plan that we are trading right now. And we're going to be doing that every single day. And that's it. And we're going to see what the results are after 100 trades. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, hit the like button. If you haven't done so already, subscribe. If you have any questions about uh, what I did today or the trading plan, let me know in the comment section below. I will eventually upload this trading plan if it continues to be profitable uh, at patreon.com slash trading armor. I have all of my other trading plans there, the trading calculator, uh, spreadsheets, all that kind of stuff is available there. So check that out if you're interested. As always, go into every single trade with a plan. Stick to that plan no matter what. Always take your stop losses, honor your profit targets, and in the long run, you should be green. Take care.